I don't know why it took so long, but we finally have a major update to reshade that is adding the HDR shaders by Lilium during the normal installation process. Okay, so we don't need a guide to install this, you know, HDR analysis tool and all the tone mapping shaders that we've been using so far. All you have to do, well, this is kind of a guide, but you get the idea. Just have to download the latest version of Reshade, the version 6, and it's, you know, just open it, select the path where you have the game executable next 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 you know direct 11 or whatever the game is using and then you will see here reshade hdr shaders by lilium done okay and also of course there's so many shaders by the way let me know which ones do you do you use and for what because i have to definitely explore more this this is totally insane i mean if you are an expert on reshade and you know how to take advantage of everything that's here, that's a lot, okay? So let me know if there is something else here that's worth um, you know, really getting into, like it is really, really useful. Let me know because I will definitely check that out. So then after you select that, you can just click next and then you will see the list of add-ons. So now I recommend you to download the reshade that has full add-on support. So you can use the major paint, the cactus, the auto HDR add-on that I've been recommending. And actually you will see that listed here. Um, you will see here HDR, auto HDR by major paint, the cactus, okay? But now it does say that you, it requires you to download it from here, so it doesn't work anyway. You, you, you cannot just check the box, at least for now. You have to you know, click there, di download it, and then just go through the process of you know, just adding the add-on. Once you are into the game, you come here, and then you go to add-ons. So again, this is the reshade with full add-on support. Make sure you download that. And then you just have to, uh, you know, click here, and then copy the path where you have that major paint the cactus folder, or just copy the major paint the cactus file to where the game executable is, and it will load uh, by default. You have to restart the game. Um, then you will see this auto HDR, so you can check the box, and then if you download the latest. SCRGB HDR update, which I highly recommend because it is supposed to have a higher bit rate, so it is supposed to look better. I don't really see the difference, but maybe in some examples you might get less color banding, for example. Uh, so I highly recommend you, you get that update. So then, if you get that update, after you restart the game, then you have to click here, use SCRGB instead of HDR10, and you have to restart the game one more time. So you have to open the game like three times just to get this working. But then you just come here to where your shaders are, and all you have to do is to select this Lilium's inverse tone mapping shader. And then after that, you have to set it up. Just you know, change the settings. So you will have by default this uh, tone mapping method, BT2446 method A, which is the one I recommend. Uh, then you only have to select this content TRC. Um, this is gonna be the original SDR gamma of the game. Okay, so you turn off the HDR of the game if, if it is not very good, like it is in this case. It's, um, you know, the highlights are good, but the contrast is, is kind of messed up. Uh, so then you would turn that off and you have to select the original SDR gamma of the game. So most games are originally gamma 2.2, okay? And the ones that are not 2.2, they are sRGB, okay? And that's on my experience from what I can see. So sRGB is gonna be just a handful of, of games, not a lot, but you will find them. So how, how do you know? Very simple. If you're crushing blacks with 2.2, then you select sRGB. That's how, that's how it is. So then you select that, 
and then you just have to input the brightness depending on your display or depending on the tone mapping that your display is doing. So if you need 1500 nits, 2000 nits, 1000 nits, 800 nits on this LG C1 for HGIG, that's what you set. Or you can, you can set it to 1000 nits if you want to use dynamic tone mapping for uh, black frame insertion, OLED Motion Pro, or you know whatever you want. And if you select, for example, if you select here 800, um, it is supposed to be more accurate to, I'm not sure, okay? But I think that it's supposed to be more accurate for you to lower this input white point from 100 to 80 nits. And you also have to lower this max input brightness from 100 to 80. Now, I don't see any difference. If you just leave it at the default 100, 100, I don't see any difference, okay? And then the other thing is this gamut, the color gamut. You can get a more colorful picture. If you increase this, uh, but if you want it more accurate, like closer to the creator's intent, which it doesn't really make any sense for the things that we're doing here, then you can lower this to zero, 1.05 to match the input color space. Okay, so that's it. And of course, you have to, on the CSP override, you have to make sure you type in CSP SC RGB. If you are using a major paint the cactus uh, with the SC RGB uh, update, okay. So there you go. That's your guide. Uh, very very simple, and this is gonna work. Um, as, I mean, reshade is gonna work for almost every game. I mean, some multiplayer games or some games that have anti cheat or or they are on the game pass folder or something like that. They might not work. Uh, but it should work for the most part on almost every game. And this HDR analysis tool is a must. Okay, it's just if, if you have an HDR display, this is like, I mean, you, you have to have this. I mean, it doesn't matter which monitor or TV, this is a must to get a good HDR. And the HDR, the auto HDR um, add-on is gonna work mostly on Unreal Engine games. Uh, but, you know, this Immortal Phoenix Rising is like a proprietary Ubisoft uh, engine and it works. It also works for the Snowdrop engine on the Division 1. Um, and you can give it a try. It, it doesn't work on everything. But when it works, it is fantastic because you don't have to be tweaking too much. Uh, you might get a washed out picture uh, if the SDR, the base SDR on the game, looks kind of washed out but if the base test they are is very very good you'll get a great contrast and the only thing you might be missing is some qualities uh on the highlights so you you're not gonna get for example if i use the native hdr on this game the highlights when i look at the sun the clouds i get more details it is clearly visible i am getting more details but the problem is the contrast of the image is kind of messed up and it is kind of messed up here too. It's not perfect, but I think it is better. It is better. But of course, I would encourage you to you know, use this tool and use your eyes, especially, to tweak the native HDR on the games to get an even, a potentially, a better result. But there are some games that are not worth even, you know, <laughs> bothering with. For example, uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Another example is. I'm not sure if it's the same engine as this, most likely. Uh, it is totally broken. I mean, it's, it's not even worth trying. It's absolute trash, <laughs> okay? So in that case, you turn that off and use this and it just looks absolutely amazing. Well, a lot of color banding and other issues that just the base test the art game has. But aside from that, the contrast is great and you get that HDR pop, that HDR impact, okay? So there you go, this is your the, the guide now to get this HDR analysis tool working on the PC. So what this means is that you no longer need a $30,000 <laughs> reference monitor to fix the HDR on your games, okay? So this is fantastic. Like Lilium says, this is the democra democratization, I believe I said that right, or something like that of the HDR or something. 
you know, like this basically means that you don't need a reference monitor. Okay, you no longer need a reference monitor to get this. And because of that, I, you know, ha I truly believe that there's no reason anymore to get broken HDR games. Like why? I mean, there, if, even if it's an indie developer, this is available. Okay, there, there's no reason to get a completely messed up HDR anymore. Okay, no reason. You don't need a reference monitor. This is free. Uh, and everyone can use it and you don't need to be an expert to use this you can see all the numbers and everything you need to know to nail the HDR and why not I mean most gamers nowadays they are either using a TV if you have a console or you're using a monitor that has HDR support even if it is not the greatest HDR is still gonna give you potentially can give you you know, better color saturation uh, it could have better contrast depending if it's if it's an LCD screen maybe the black floor the black level suffers and whatever but it, it has the potential to be better so most people should be using that uh, but I'm sure a lot of people just don't even try it because it is a mess you have to, because you have to be fixing black level rays uh, like here is this is not perfect uh, of course you're not supposed to have perfect blacks on every single scene uh, you know this is a bright sunny day but yeah this game even when you are on the shadows is not perfect and it should <laughs> okay it should um, so yeah let me know your thoughts and opinions and if you have any questions